the reason that I'm doing this, why I will never trust or invest in crypto ever again. Right now, there's a bunch of people who are investing in crypto. They're listening to the people on YouTube and TikTok and Instagram buy on the dip. So right now, there's a bunch of people who are still piling into crypto. And this is why I say a bunch of people are about to leave crypto because what's going to happen, stocks are going to crash again and crypto is going to crash even harder. And with that, a lot of people are going to leave crypto because there's only so much money you can lose. Like if your dollar cost averaging, you're putting money in the crypto and let's say you put five thousand dollars in there, then the market drops and your your, your five thousand dollars now turns to one thousand. You, you cannot keep doing that mentally. The per people can't handle that. So there's a bunch of people about to leave crypto. And this is just one of the first videos talking about it. Crypto is, in fact, worse than what it was set out to fix. There are so many bad actors and rug pulls and hacks and lies and corrupt companies and mismanaged funds. Crypto is hot garbage right now. And with all the fear, uncertainty, and doubt around the recent FTX bankruptcy, I've invested in crypto, and guess what? I've lost a ton of money. And now, with all that's going on in the crypto world, I am giving up all hope for it. Normally, I don't focus on crypto on my channel, but this story is so compelling that I have to make a video on it. So bear with me. Now, if you haven't been keeping up with the news in crypto, let me explain what's been happening. So. Get a beer or two because the story gets pretty spicy. Let's start. So there's a guy named Sam Bankman Fried. I'm going to refer to him as SBF for short. I mean, just take a look at this guy and give me your first impressions. Do you have a sense of how much of your fortune you'd be willing to give away in the end? I mean, in the end, I think almost all of it, right? Like in, in the end, uh, the way I think about it basically is something like, well, let me go ahead and say something. It is on record that Bill Gates, uh, Warren Buffett, I think Jeff Bezos, I'm not 100% certain, that all of these billionaires are pledging to give all their money away. Why, why are all these people with all this money pledging to give all their money away? And at the moment, the majority of them haven't even begun to give anything significant or meaningful. This is to keep you the average person from hating them. They'll put it out there. They'll spin out this narrative and they, they, they take their time doing it. It's kind of crazy. You know, I don't know, maybe like 1% of it or something I'll, you know, end up using on, on, on myself. But, but if I do well, and obviously if, if, you know, if I underperform, then these numbers don't have to change. But, but if I do well, I think that should be kind of plenty for me. Yeah. Okay. Now, before we get to today's news, we have to go all the way back to get a good understanding about how his story started. He was the son of two Stanford law professors. He grew up in California and went to MIT studying physics and math. Pretty smart kid. After graduating from MIT, he started working at Jane Street Capital, which was a private trading firm in New York, trading international stocks and ETFs. But he became interested in Bitcoin. Now, back in 2017, during the early days of crypto, he noticed that the price of Bitcoin varied from country. The early days of crypto was actually 2009, 10, and 11. 2017, crypto had uh, gotten some name brand recognition. One of the things I tried to do was to get people to buy crypto, and no one was interested. No one was interested. And this is when I bought my original stash of Bitcoin and I spent maybe 10 bucks and I turn around and sold it for 200,000. So the time for people to get into crypto was back then. That was the time to really get into it because you could have made a ton of money. To country on different crypto exchanges. 
he noticed that the price of Bitcoin was higher in Asian countries like Japan and South Korea as compared to the US. So he started arbitraging, which is where he bought Bitcoin from one exchange for cheap and then sold it to another exchange for a higher price. Sometimes the price difference would be up to 60% in certain countries, which provided him a perfect opportunity to make money. He was making decent profits, so he later left his job to start his own trading business with a few friends. The company was called Alameda Research, which became his own crypto trading firm. The arbitraging trading idea seemed like a very basic idea right now, but five years ago, it was very difficult to set up a complex exchange to make connections to different trading platforms in different countries. But he was able to do it, and by January of 2018, he was making $1 million a day. From I actually don't believe that. With all the stuff that's coming out, with the sloppy accounting practices, everything that they say they're put out is in question. Because here's the thing. All right. So if you were buying Bitcoin from one exchange and then selling it on another, you still have the cost basis of the you, you have to have capital to buy the Bitcoin and to flip it. And, you know, based upon what Bitcoin was at that time, we're talking about several million dollars would have been needed to make that million dollars a day. I don't, I don't believe it. From there, Alameda exploded, and in spring of 2019, SBF was able to launch his second business, which is a cryptocurrency exchange called FTX to provide liquidity for traders. He left his CEO position of Alameda to his previous Jane Street trading partner, Caroline Allison, and shifted his major focus to FTX. Now, don't forget this girl. We're going to get back to her later. Now, what did FTX actually do? Well, they help regular traders trade crypto. Just like how there are stock exchanges like the New York Stock Exchange that help trade stocks. Other big name crypto exchanges that you've probably heard of are Coinbase, Gemini, Kraken, and Binance. Now, one thing to note is that these are centralized crypto exchanges, which means that they are managed by one organization or company. You get the convenience of trading through them, but you have to put their trust in them because they hold the cryptocurrency for you. But FTX was special because they had very low trading fees and the ability to trade options on cryptocurrency. Plus, they had a very user-friendly interface that attracted many investors and traders. So FTX grew and grew. And well, SBF became the golden poster boy of crypto. FTX grew to be valued at an estimated high of $32 billion, and they sponsored a number of sports teams and organizations. SBF advertised FTX hard. He bought the naming rights to the Miami Heat basketball arena and renamed it the FTX Arena. He put FTX logos seen in Major League Baseball. He formed a deal with Mercedes to sponsor them for F1 racing. In Washington, D.C., SPF became one of the Democratic Party's top donors. He had public figures like Tom Brady, Shaq, Stephen Curry, Kevin O'Leary investing or promoting FTX. Larry David even did a huge Super Bowl ad promoting FTX. You remember this ad? Like I was saying, it's FTX. It's a safe and easy way to get into crypto. Yeah, I don't think so. And actually, if that had been your original position, you would have been good right now. You would have been good because all of this promotion and getting all of these people in this name, it was just like a house of cards. It was like this, almost like this Ponzi scheme driven by crypto. And I'm never wrong about this stuff. Never. FTX later became crypto's third largest exchange and had an estimated 1.2 million registered users using the exchange. In 2021, he moved FTX headquarters from Hong Kong to the Bahamas for a more favorable regulatory environment and bought a $60 million penthouse called the Orchid, located in the Albany, Bahamas. It's a pretty nice looking place, but really, this guy was balling hard. Within the last two years, though, everything went wrong. 
This year's inflation news hit the stock market hard, and it hit the crypto market even harder as crypto prices tanked. FTX and Alameda took big losses and began borrowing money to stay afloat and to make other risky crypto bets to try and make up for the losses that they had. During this sp question, since crypto was so great, why did they have to borrow money? Really think about that. Why did they have to leverage crypto to make more money? I want you to think about that. Spring, crypto was hit by more terrible news. A popular US dollar pegged stablecoin called Terra USD or UST and its token Luna felt 96% in one day, wiping out $60 billion worth of value. Its leader, Do Kwon, is still currently on the run in Europe, trying to hide from the South Korean government. It hit the whole crypto industry hard, but it hit investor confidence even harder. Investors all around the world were probably asking themselves, is crypto just a Ponzi scheme run by greedy thieves? Overall, not a good image for the industry at all. Now, by June of this year, Bitcoin and Ethereum were both down more than 50% compared to the start of 2022. Everything was getting hit hard, and FTX was really feeling it. Now, ultimately, what I think led to the start of the FTX downfall was the really bad trading bets made by Alameda, run by CEO Caroline Ellison and SPF. Now, let's take a deeper look at Caroline. Here she is talking in an interview about Alameda's trading. Do you think that you have been able to pull this thing off without your mathematics degree or it has been the pillar of your trading activity? Uh, yeah, absolutely could pull it off without my math degree. <laughs> use very little math. Um, use a lot of like uh, elementary school math, like uh, arithmetic, probability, uh, but not really any of the advanced stuff I learned. All right. I want you to think about this. Look at these people. Look at her. Look at these dudes. Does this look like money? I want you to really, really think about it. Money has a certain look and a certain feel. And I am not seeing it here. I'm not seeing it here at all. To college. Uh, yeah, I think we, we tend not to have things like stop losses. I think those aren't necessarily a great risk management tool because uh, they often sort of lead to you being closed out of your position in relatively low liquidity situations and losing to that. Did she say she uses elementary math to run a multi-billion dollar company? And did she say that stop losses are not great risk management tools? Is this seriously the brain behind the curtain? We're talking about the CEO of Alameda trading with $10 billion. We're not talking about trading with $10 million. We're talking $10 billion with a B. And she lost it all, but kept it hush-hush with SPF. Now, by the summer of 2022, lenders started asking for their money back. Now, Alameda didn't have it. So what did SPF do? Now, because he was in charge of these two companies, he took money from FTX customer deposits to quietly bail out Alameda's estimated $10 billion debt. These two companies, FTX and Alameda Research, were supposed to be two different entities. But the truth is that they were literally in bed together. And I mean literally. Alameda was one of crypto's biggest trading firms and run by CEO Caroline Ellison. And FTX was one of the world's biggest crypto exchanges. Both were in the pockets of SBF. But he was also in a romantic relationship with Caroline, as SBF and his high-ranking employees were all working and living together in his huge mansion in the Bahamas. I, I want to say something, and this is just me, and this may be considered mean or whatever, but you're worth $22 billion dollars. And that's the best you can do. I want you to really, 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 really think about that. Really think about that. FTX and Alameda's professional relationship from a business standpoint was already super problematic. And the personal relationship of these two leaders even more so. SPF was double dipping by operating his own trading firm and his own centralized exchange which is not allowed in the regular capital markets because he had an unfair advantage. That would be like owning part of the New York Stock Exchange 
and a private hedge fund to trade, which simply wouldn't be allowed. There would be too many conflicts of interest. But this was crypto, and it wasn't regulated. Now, how do they manage to hide all the customers' money moved from FTX to Alameda? SPF created a token called FTT, which was completely made up to hide the real value that was stolen. In real life, FTT was a means for which... And I keep saying this, and I keep saying this, and people keep pushing back. This stuff was made in someone's basement. We don't even know who the guy is who invented Bitcoin. We have no clue. This stuff was made in someone's kitchen. And people have put their retirement money based upon this thing, which is just literally a made up money. And then people was like, well, fiat currency is none the better. I would disagree with you vigorously. Uh, the United States dollar has the United States military behind it. What does crypto have behind it? Absolutely nothing. Real investors could invest in FTX since the FTT token was a reflection of investor confidence in SPF, who controlled most of the FTT tokens. And because SPF had such a positive image in the crypto world, people believed in him and put a decent value on the FTT token. SPF also promised FTT token owners that they would have lower trading costs on FTX and the ability to earn interest and rewards. But these tokens were unregulated and very susceptible to market downturns. Nevertheless, investors put a value on this freely printed token and therefore in their portfolio, it looked like they had money. But the real customer cash deposits were secretly being moved to Alameda to pay off debt from poor trades made by Caroline and SPF. And all the investors were left holding was a made-up digital coin. Now, how did all of this come to light? A Twitter fight against FTX's rival Binance uncovered it all. Now, who's Binance? Binance, again, is a very large cryptocurrency exchange run by CEO Changpeng Zhao, CZ for short. FTX and Binance relationship goes all the way back to 2019 when SPF and CZ were both growing their own companies. CZ invested $100 million in FTX for a 20% stake in FTX to enable sustainable growth in the crypto economy together. However, two years later, their relationship soured as they grew to become fierce competitors in the crypto space. Shots were fired on Twitter back and forth, back and forth. In June of this year, SPF bought back Binance's stake in FTX for $2 billion paid in FTT tokens. So now Binance owns a ton of FTT. Then on November 2nd, a report from Coindesk showed that a significant portion of Alameda's $14.6 billion of investments were held in FTT, which raised a lot of questions about FTX's financial situation. Now, why would a crypto hedge fund only own one type of cryptocurrency? Why not hold its major investments in Bitcoin and Ethereum? And doesn't it look shady that Alameda, which is owned by SPF, hold a coin issued by FTX, which is also owned by SPF, for a large percentage of its investments, people were starting to get very skeptical. And then, on November 6, CZ dropped the bomb on Twitter. He stated that due to recent revelations which have come to light, Binance will now liquidate any FTT they own. They sold their entire stake in FTT worth about $580 million. This led to a huge bank run on FTT tokens as investors try to get rid of their FTT as quickly as possible. There was a giant withdrawal surge as users rushed to withdraw $6 billion worth of crypto tokens from FTX in just 72 hours. Now, on an average day, FTX withdrawals normally came out at around tens of millions of dollars. But billions in three days? People were panicking. They were losing confidence, and they were reacting very fast. 
SBF tried to quickly find investors to cover up the multi-billion dollar hole from the money that had been withdrawn from FTX users to pay off Alameda's debt. But he couldn't find anybody. So who did he turn to? CZ, of course. And on November 8th via Twitter, CZ announced a potential deal to buy out FTX. This tanked FTT's price 80% in one day as the public just found out that FTX also needed a bailout. A bailout. Some people thought it was just a token issue, but the company was going down. Now, even SPF's own employees and executives were shocked. Everyone was in the dark about Alameda's debt and FTX's cover-up. The next day, however, on November 9th, CZ tweeted, Sad day, tried, with a crying emoji. He did his due diligence and didn't like what he saw. He tweeted, As a result of corporate due diligence, as well as the latest news reports regarding mishandled customer funds and alleged U.S. agency investigations, we have decided that we will not pursue the potential acquisition of FTX. In the beginning, our hope was to be able to support FTX customers to provide liquidity, but the issues are beyond our control or ability to help. Now, during this time period, Bloomberg also came out with a news article stating that the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission and the Commodity Futures Trading Commission were investigating FTX and SPF's holdings and its handling of client funds. FTX's website stated that it was not processing withdrawals at that time. Shocking, isn't it? Your money in FTX is now unable to be withdrawn. It's starting to look really bad. On November 11th, FTX and Alameda both filed for bankruptcy. He tweeted, I'm really sorry again that we ended up here. Hopefully things can find a way to recover. Hopefully this can bring some amount of transparency, trust, and governance to them. Ultimately, hopefully it can be better for the customers. SPF resigned as CEO and was replaced by John Ray, a corporate bankruptcy restructuring specialist who previously oversaw the liquidation and restructuring of Enron. Later that evening and into the next day, some $473 million in funds were removed from FTX, characterized as unauthorized transactions. News went around reporting that FTX was hacked and the website was down. You know, this is something that's funny. How there's always these hacks or these incidents happening with crypto money. Literally, count my words on this. At some point in the future, Binance is going to get hacked. Um, it, it is just amazing how frequent this happens in the crypto space that people have entrusted their crypto on an exchange and something happens to the exchange. And guess what? They lose their crypto. A post on Reddit in the cryptocurrency forum warned others to get their money off of FTX as quickly as possible due to the hack and uninstall that app. But many people called it an insider job, as it was unlikely that during the bankruptcy announcement that a hacker would have gained access to FTX's servers, keys, and backups. SPF and his high-ranking FTX employees were trying to take out and hide what was left of the money and make a run for it from the Bahamas to Hong Kong. But he was caught and interviewed by the Bahamas police based on a tip that he had a rumored flight to Argentina. SPF is supposedly still currently residing in the Bahamas awaiting further investigation. FTX and SPF are now being investigated by regulators in the US and overseas, including the US Attorney's Office, the SEC, and the Commodities Future Trading Commissions for civil and criminal violations of securities law. John Ray, the current CEO who was brought in for liquidation, stated in the FTX bankruptcy filing report, quote, never in my career have I seen such a complete failure of corporate controls and such a complete absence of trustworthy financial information as occurred here. The company did not have any cash management system Expense reports were approved by emojis over chat. Corporate funds were used to buy real estate and personal items for employees. Loans were issued without keeping any record. There was no record of who made a particular decision. SPF used applications that auto-deleted messages and asked employees to do the same. There was literally no organization for anything. Now, 
This is a multi-billion dollar company with thousands of employees without a clear way of tracking communication or auditing. They didn't have appropriate corporate governance and never had board meetings. Their HR department had unclear records of its various employees and outside contractors that were so bad that the bankruptcy firms couldn't even prepare a complete list of people who were employees. They had no record of their digital assets, nor did they have any appropriate bookkeeping, nor records with appropriate security controls. SPF and an associate even created a backdoor software to conceal the misuse of customer funds from FTX. What the heck? SPF knew what he was doing. Deleting corporate communications, not keeping appropriate records, creating software to hide funds to manage a multi-billion dollar company. Wow. This man is a thief. Simple as that. SPF robbed people. He robbed a ton of people. This is a story of greed and corruption, and it's going down in the history books like the crash of Lehman Brothers and Enron. Millions of investors are probably going to lose their money, and billions of dollars worth of investments are gone. Big name funds like Tiger Global Management, the Ontario Teachers Pension Plan, SoftBank, BlackRock, and Sequoia Capital also lost money. Mercedes and the Miami Heats obviously cut ties with FTX, and now his $40 million penthouse is also up for grabs. Binance is now set to dominate the industry. But in reality, FTX's collapse benefits no one, not even Binance, because there's going to be so much more scrutiny and governmental regulation of cryptocurrencies, not to mention the absolute devastation to investor confidence. For people that have... Now, this is something that I find to be extremely interesting. Everyone is screaming decentralization, no regulation. Just let the people do what they want to do. And you see the result. Rapid fraud, rapid crime, ra numerous rug pulls. So without government regulation, People are going to continue to rob people. It's just that simple. So for all these people, it's like decentralization and you know peer-to-peer -peer transactions. Okay. Crypto is replete with crime and fraud and hacks. But for some reason, y'all keep believing in it. Lost money this year. I personally believe many will never come back to crypto. And this also pushes new investors looking to get into crypto as far away as possible. As long as these corruption stories and scams happen regularly, crypto is never gaining mass adoption. Exchanges are the main way average people get and hold crypto. And if the average person can't trust them, then they can't trust crypto. Turns out banks are regulated for a reason. Exchanges should be regulated too. Yes, people should be using their own cold private wallets. But in order to get mass adoption, investing in crypto has to be as convenient as possible. And right now, it's not convenient at all. So I personally believe that there's not going to be a bright future for crypto. It's just not safe and convenient. And even though I've never put any of my money in FTX, I'm done with crypto. I followed crypto's news in the periphery and knew who SPF was for years before all of this started. And I even looked up to him. I told myself, wow, look at this 30-year-old and how much he's achieved. He had a lot of power, and he had a lot of opportunity to fix the issues he created. But he didn't, and chose to steal from people who trusted him. There's probably still residual ripple effects from FTX that have yet to be felt. Maybe some other exchanges will go bankrupt too. Or maybe the whole crypto market will go into a deep trading crypto winter. But who knows? One thing that I do know is that a lot of investors won't be coming back. I personally won't. So there you have it, guys. The whole story of SPF and FTX's demise. Crazy, isn't it? I will be sticking with investing and trading in stocks and options for the time being. Good luck to those that still invest and trade in the crypto space. Sorry for such a long ramble, but like I said, the story is just so interesting, I had to share. 
As always, I appreciate your time for stopping by and listening. Now, this is where we get real interesting. Look at the comments. Friends laughed at me for avoiding crypto. Just go ahead. Oh, I will never invest, trust or invest in crypto ever again. Just go ahead and check out these comments. Just check them out. <laughs> I mean, it is craziness what is happening right now. But mark my words, Bitcoin crypto will crash harder. It will go lower than what it is. And at that point, I feel that so many people will be pushed out of the crypto market because you, you just can't trust it. You just simply can't trust it.